You are very welcome back. Now, Doi and I are feeling a bit old. Can't believe this. A little different today Can't because we are going to go back to 2014. And that is when our guest today was first on the show here. And it was her first novel. Yeah. Yes, we are thrilled to have her back She's 10 been years later. She's very, nearly. very busy. Yes. We are delighted to have Carmel Harrington back on the show. Carmel, I can't, almost 10 years. Almost 10 years. It will be 10 years, yeah. Yeah, you've been she very says, busy since now. I, listen, I put my mind to something, I do it. I've done a book a year since then. So, wow. Yeah, I know. It's yeah. hard to believe, isn't it? Is that, is, that, uh, is that the timeline you set for yourself? One book a year. Yeah, that's about all I can manage. It takes me about six months to do the first draft mm -hmm. and then another six months to fine tune it. And then a few months after that, then to get it on, you know, ready for a bookshelf. Yeah. I know you've been listed for various prizes along the way with your books, which is brilliant. But also your style of writing has changed. Now you're in almost a family saga yes. slash history, multi-generational. So tell us about your latest book. This is The Girl from Donegal. Yeah. Well, it's my first historical fiction, yeah. which I didn't really plan to do. But I found a snippet um, on a BBC historical archive, which spoke about a woman who left Northern Ireland in 1939 mm -hmm. to live in Bermuda. And I kind of thought, imagine the sense of adventure she must have had to go to the other side of the world. So I started to think about Eliza Lavery, which is my central character here. Mm -hmm. And she leaves um, Donegal in 1939 at the outbreak of World War II and sets sail on the SS Athenia, which is a real life ship. Mm -hmm. And what happens on that ship at the outbreak of, of war um, changes her life and the lives of her family and many other families for years to come. So it is like a multi-generational story. Mm -hmm. There's 80 years, three generations that are all kind of connected to that fateful voyage and what happens on it, um, the trajectory. Yeah. And Karen, when you're dealing with a book that spans over 80 years, like going back to the history part of it then, like say, the history part has to be real yes. for people to buy into this, I'd imagine. Yeah, I read a lot of um, non-fiction books. You know, the great thing about the events that happened on the Athenia, there's a lot of first-hand accounts yeah. um, because there were a lot of children on board that. There were a lot of Americans and Canadians who were fleeing um, London to get back home because they knew the war was coming and they thought they needed to get away while there was still safe passage. So there are a lot of stuff on YouTube. There's a lot of books that have been written. And actually, a few years ago, there was a reunion of any of the survivors mm -hmm. of the Athenia, and all of that was recorded. So I had first-hand accounts which could keep me fairly accurate. This is brilliant. It's almost like, you know, we talk about ships like, you know, the Lusitania yeah. and, of course, the exactly. Titanic. And we, we found some of those first-hand mm -hmm. accounts, you know, tragedy there. But, but this wasn't. But the interesting thing is, so you heard this, you, you got this snippet or you heard yeah. this snippet, but you then found, almost like serendipitous, that you found that you actually had relatives in Bermuda yourself. Yeah. How did this come about? You know, it was, everything just seemed to point me towards Bermuda. It was the most craziest thing. You know, when you hear a name mentioned, and I knew nothing about yeah. Bermuda, right? Yeah. I kind of thought it was in the Caribbean, which it isn't really. Mm -hmm. And that's all I knew. And then as soon as I kind of read that snippet, every road pointed me to it. And I had done my DNA testing just to kind of find out what my heritage was. And my dad is from Wexford and my mum is from London. Mm -hmm. So no surprise, 50% of me is Irish through and through, thanks yeah. dad. But the other 50%, there was a good mix on my mother's side. Um, there was a lot of Greek, um, a lot of Italian, and also English. Um, but on both sides, there were a lot of people living in Bermuda. And I was going, why have I got this Irish? This is total Bermuda Triangle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Isn't it? Just, it literally. And it was the fact it was maternal and paternal. Yeah. So then I started to look a little deeper. And actually, the second governor of Bermuda was a Tucker. And that's where we kind of came from. My grandmother, my English grandmother was a Tucker. Oh. And so they went out as early kind of colonists. They went out to Bermuda. And then on the Irish side, we were on the mm. famine ships, which actually a lot of people went to Bermuda for a new life after the famine. My and, God. And we kind of ended up, some of my ancestors ended up there. So, so you obviously went on the journey there yourself. We yes. can see that here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we went from we went with my husband and two kids, and you know. So was, it, was this for this is all research as yeah. well for the book? Dahi, I'm a, a bit of a holiday as I'm well, a maybe. Martyr. Yeah, a bit of a martyr. To, you know, <laughs> my agent always says that I'm a method author, and I do like genuinely to walk in the shoes of my um, yeah. of my characters, and that's not just the nice parts like Bermuda, but all parts. So I had to kind of go there because. I needed to see where my character, Eliza Lavery, would be in 1939. And it's such a historical place. Mm -hmm. I was able to do lots of tours and go to museums and meet people. And it was really beneficial for me when, when we were there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very mm -hmm. British because I know my cousin yeah, really... worked there. Well, he yeah. worked there for years. Um, uh, he's, he's from London, but it's still very British Bermuda, apparently. I haven't been, but, yeah. but it's still supposed to be very the British. British shorts, more yeah. honest to goodness, until yeah. you see a policeman 
in Bermuda. They wear Bermuda shirts. Yes, they do. Yes, directing the traffic. Like, honestly, it's a very unusual sight, but wonderful to watch, actually. But I don't think people are aware of the Irish connection there, though. Yeah. As you mentioned there, Carmen. Yeah, and there really is. And you know what we found very straight? Look, we're Irish, we know this, right? If you go on a bus in Ireland, you have to say thank you to the bus driver. Yeah. It's like in our DNA, right? But most places you go to, you don't see that. And when we were in Bermuda, we took public transport because I kind of wanted to do what my characters were doing. And I noticed that everybody was hello to the busman, thank you to the busman. Yeah. And I thought that is definitely a bit of Irish there now. In that matters. Yeah. There is. And even the national flower in Bermuda is... Um, a very long name which I can't pronounce, but it's a blue iris. And the only other place in the world it's native to is in Ireland. Isn't that amazing? Up in Bermana. Do you know what's so, lovely about yeah. this? And I think uh, I, I certainly love family sagas. I mean, yes. books that I read, I yeah. love family sagas, and Doyle loves history. Yeah. It'd be perfect yeah. for both of us. So I think that that historical family saga bringing us back, walking in the shoes of our yeah. forebearers, that type of thing. But what's interesting about this as well is that so many people are into this type of writing now. But you've got a few recommendations if we're into mm -hmm. yes. historical novels and family sagas. Yeah, I do. And I have three that I've chosen from yeah. very different periods of history. So I hope something for everyone. But yeah. um, the first one is The Great Alone by mm. Kristen Hanna. Mm. And this is set in the early 1970s, post the Vietnam War. And it's about a family who go to Alaska. Um, the father has got a lot of post-traumatic stress following the war. Mm -hmm. And him and his wife have a very volatile relationship. So it's following them as they kind of get used to the wilderness of Alaska. Yeah. Beautiful read. Yeah. Yeah. And the, next one? What's the, second one? the next one is The Bird in the Bamboo Cage mm -hmm. by Hazel Gaynor. And this is set in World War II and Japan has just declared war with the Allies. And in China, a school of missionary, which has a lot of English kids in it, end up in an, an internment camp. And it's about their story. It's very, this one made me cry. It mm -hmm. was, but beautifully written. And I highly recommend it if you like World War II yeah. sagas. And the, and the final one then, Carmel? Well, this one is for a little bit of fun, I thought, but Lessons in Chemistry is by Bonnie Garmus. Mm -hmm. And it's her debut novel and it's set in the 50s and 60s. And it's about a very great character called Elizabeth Lott, who is a feminist, a scientist, and she has a TV show, a cookery show, where she's very much asked to stay in her lane and just be a nice woman but she doesn't stay in her lane and kind of causes a bit of a revolution in America. Mm -hmm. Great. I like those. Uh, you had a good friend of, our, uh, a friend of ours, uh, Claudia Carroll, as well, at your launch, uh, Carmel. She's a lovely friend, actually. Yeah. She's uh, fabulous. Yeah, and I've known her right from the beginning, really, you know, because as you said, it's 10 years now that I've been writing books. And she launched my book for me in Debray's last week. And mm -hmm. like we literally, we held hands the whole way through it. And oh, yeah, she made a speech. She tried her best to make me cry. Honestly, Maura, it, the it, mascara was there. Was good. Yeah, yeah, she did. She gave, she gave a beautiful speech and told a few tales on me as well. Um, oh, good. Yeah, which was very funny. But, we but you know what she said, which is brilliant. And you know, of course, Maeve Benchy, which we had mm -hmm. on the show. Sure. And of course, her husband and, and, and a wonderful writer. That you're, She said you're kind of the heir to Maeve Benchy. So do you feel you're filling that... A slot, but I suppose in a way, I mean, it's it's, it's yeah. big shoes to fill. Yeah. It is. It's, it's an honour, actually, mm. to be mentioned even in the same sentence as her. I'm a huge May fan. In fact, like when I was a kid, my mother read all her books and I used to steal them on my mother and read them kind of under covers. So Claudia has been the first to say that, but it has been said a few times since. Brilliant. But she always says that. She's, yeah, She's a it's, a, it's a lovely compliment. Brilliant. Yeah. Cameron, great to have you. Uh, the best of luck with uh, the girl from Donegal. And uh, make sure now it's not 10 years before you come back to see us again. I know you're very, very busy, but can, yeah. you might fit us in. I would love to. Love. Brilliant. Always a pleasure. Well, the best of success. We're so happy that everything's gone so well for you. It's Perfect. great. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you.